Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the Conqueror Gun Carriage. It's a Tier 10 British SPG. It's located on the north spawn of Cliff, and this one is under the command of Photo Bomber of the Fun 2 Clan. Now he's um, under a rather large howitzer, 233.7 millimeters is the caliber, and game's underway. Yes, it's the second biggest gun in the game, actually. But it is a howitzer. And this is actually a fake tank because well, the, the British never actually produced a RT based on the uh, Conqueror heavy tank. And this is what uh, Wargaming have come up with. Now, he spotted a number of enemy tanks down in the Western Pass. Oh, one of our tanks, a Leopard 1, just got blown up by a Progetto 65. Okay, a Leopard 1 on the enemy team sitting in that bush. And he just got a direct hit. Now it does have rather a long reload, this RT. Exceptionally long, actually. 44.1 seconds is the standard reload time. And I think Photobomber had a reload time of about 35 seconds or thereabouts. So whilst that, that's... Uh, Continuing, we can actually have a look around the battlefield and see if there's anything that takes his fancy. Well, there's a Leopard 1 down there. In fact, there's three Leopard 1s on the enemy team. And I heard news yesterday that apparently the uh, Ukrainians are going to be using Leopard 1s in their battles against the Russians. Yes, a whole batch of uh, Leopard 1 tanks has become available. And the tank museum is pointing out that they might actually be donated or given to the cause. Uh, although they do, do have a 105mm howitzer as their main armament, not uh, the 120mm uh, you actually find on the Leopard 2s. Okay, T57 Heavy managed to get behind that rock before we could do anything. And we just lost a 121 on our team to their 103. And looks like our 268 version 4 is having a bit of a trouble with the enemy tanks. The T57 Heavy was derping in with all four rounds. I don't think that T57 Heavy is going to last very long. And actually what, um, what Photobomb is doing at the moment is actually quite useful because he's actually hitting that E50 and he just got a direct hit on the guy. And he's the one who's supposed to be supporting the T57 Heavy down by the donut. So if he's not doing his job because he's suddenly lost a huge amount of hit points then it could be that that T-57 Heavy will die fairly promptly. But there's the E-50M again. We can see he has lost some hit points. It wasn't a huge amount, and he is still in the game. In fact, their T-57 did survive. Look, we've got two of our Leopard 1s trying to get a shot on him. But one of them did, but looks like he got hit. And Photobomb managed to get another round on the E-50. But this time around, he didn't get much in the way of damage. Okay, we've got a strip 103B down at the far end, the Western Pass. That's the same one who actually took out our 121. Our Heshbarn just managed to fire around into him, but he's in reload now. And of course, you know, Heshbarns do take a long time to reload. So we're going to try and provide a bit of support. Photobomb is going to land around in there, see if he can help him. Rounds out. Well, 335 hit points, but the Strib used his repair kit to quickly get rid of the stun. And now the enemy RT is trying to have a go at our hash farm. And that's a, also a Conqueror gun carriage, by the way. Well, he's fired his next dirt round, and he's in reload. And unfortunately, there's only a Manticore who can actually support him. And he's doing so from the north side of the donut at the moment. With two tanks down on the enemy, and that Striv should be able to do some severe damage on this photo bomber. Oh, he does! He gets a direct hit for 424, and this time around the Striv can't get rid of the stun, and our Heshbarn's going to have his wicked way, and the Striv goes down. That's a good kill. So he picks up that one, and the stun assist. In the meantime, we're looking at the donut. There is an E100, and we think there's a T57 Heavy on the south side of it. 
from Sal Manticore is on the north side. Okay, there's the T-57 Heavy. We're lining up a shot. Rounds out. Looks good. It is. It's a kill. 369 hit points. The T-57 is out of the game. That's a useful kill. Mind you, there's another Heshbon on the enemy team. He's managed to make his way through the Western Pass. But look at that. He just got wiped with a huge amount of hit points. And the enemy managed to kill our Badger, but that Heshbon is now a one-shot for our, our Manticore. And now we're looking at the Fosh B, who's up the other end of the pass, and he's about to get hit by Photobomber as well. Rounds out. Direct hit. 258, it hit the top armor. And our Manticore just had a wicked way with the enemy Manticore. So that's actually changed things around. And now we're up to even score. Eight tanks each. Well, the E100 has come up onto the um, the donut. Uh, that might not help him, though, because he might now get hit by uh, Photobomber's shot whilst he's trying to aim. And work out where he's going to be. He's ran out there. Yes, perfect shot. Perfect. And he got stun assist. And the E100 goes down. And that now gives us the lead. Yes, that was a very good blind shot. He anticipated how far the E100 was going to move in the in intervening period. And it worked out very well indeed. Right, well... The good news is that now enough enemy tanks have been killed that our teammates are starting to make their way through the center of the map. No one's actually gone around the map, but they are making their way through the center. Our Yudas was having a quick look at that E50M, and if Photobomb can land around near here, that guy, that's the same one he's hit before, then he might be able to take him out of the game because he's a one-shot. And he got him! Yep, he got a blind kill. The E-50 was where he expected him to be, and he was within range. Remember, this, this RT does have an exceptionally large footprint. It's 11.6 uh, meters radius. That means it's you know, 22 meters across the footprint, so you only have to be near for the shell to do a huge amount of damage. But we do have a bit of a problem now because we've got an object 268 who has gone around the, the uh, cliff and he's now threatening from the east. Oh, that one was good. Right into his rear for 402. He's now retreating. And our units 1516 is chasing him. But the Leopard 1 on the enemy team is also chasing him. And our Leopard up on top of the hill can't help very much. So it looks like it's either Photobomber or the Gorilla 15 on our team who are going to have to help the units. But I think he's going to lose a few hit points in the meanwhile. Okay, we're almost loaded. There goes the Leopard. Ayuda survives, but he's seriously depleted. And now the 268s come round. And so this is where Photobomber can really help by putting a round in there. If he can get that guy stunned, he might be able to take him out now. He's a one shot. Oh, he's so close. And he goes down to the Leopard one on our team. And now that's it. The game's over. Well, what I didn't see was that the kill shot on that Object 268 right at the end of the game came from the Leopard. And the Leopard was directly above the uh, 268, coming down the side of the cliff as he did so. And he managed to put it right through the roof and took out one of the most deadly uh, enemy tank destroyers in the game. And most people think the Object 268 version 4 is the one that's deadly. No, the 268 standard is quite deadly because it has very high penetration for its standard rounds it's over 300 millimeters of penetration with standard ammo which makes this a very very dangerous tank destroyer but anyway they managed to get rid of it and we can see that photobomber managed to get a first class tanker in the conqueror gun carriage he also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in fact he got seven he got a gorse medal for doing more damage exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle and he also got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team his win eight in that game was 5116 which is super unicum standard so let's have a look at his team score and see where he was well he definitely got the highest damage in the game because he was very active during it 4284 hit points in total 
the second highest damage went to the Hesh Barn that he was protecting for some of the time. Unfortunately, he couldn't protect him all the time, and he did go down eventually. 3,840 hit points went to that guy, and the third highest damage in the game went to the Leopard 1. I think that was the one who came down off the cliff. You got 3,666, and we can check that by having a look at the object 268 and seeing who shot him. It was Mr. Dac 93, which means that... Oh, it's not the same one. <laughs> it's a different one. That's the one who shot the object 268 as he was coming down. This one was a different one, but it's still a good score. When it came to kills, well, it was the E50M who did the best with three kills, but of course, Photobomber managed to put him out of action. And two kills went to the Conqueror gun carriage of uh, Photobomber, the Hesh Bomb, the Leopard 1, the Udez 1516, the Mantic Cord, the Leopard 1, the other one, and the T57 heavy on the enemy team. So there's a lot of players with two kills. And when it came to base XP, he's got that one as well. So he's got the top in two columns and the second in the third. 901 went to Photobomber, 847 went to the Hesh Barn, 819 went to the Leopard 1. He fired 12 rounds in that game. Good output. Seven direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot, and 11 splash. Let's have a quick look to see which one did he penetrate in that game. Well, I can't think it would be the Leopard 1s. Did he penetrate the E15? No, he didn't. The Striv? No. Fosh B? No. This is very, very odd indeed. Could it be one of the Leopards? Yes, it was. One of the Leopards took a direct hit, and it was a penetrating shot. So that's, that was a very good round indeed, that one. He also got 11 splashes, damage of 4,284, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage, eight of the enemy, killed two, there's the Confederate. And he got 1,243 hit points of stun assist off, 11, off 10 stuns. He earned 47,440 credits from the game, got seven bonds, and he also took away 6,758 experience points altogether. So yes, CGC when RNG says yes, when it works, it works, and you get great rounds on the enemy. And if you pick your targets correctly, and after all, Photobomber did pick his targets very carefully to get the right ones and to help his teammates. He was trying to help them deliberately. Um, he could have actually put more indications in there, I think, to actually let his teammates know what he was aiming at. Uh, I always think it helps if you help if you let your teammates know that the RT is about to fire on a target. It, it also reassures them they've got somebody who's got their back. And uh, that works out very well. It means you, you're a lot more busy trying to uh, uh, select your targets and help your teammates. But in the end, you get the, the right results. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithms. And thank you for watching.